Hey, this is Cam with the West Central Montana Avalanche Center. We're down in the Southern Bitterroot on a west aspect, just above 8,000 feet. So it's been warm for the last week, really, and we're now transitioning into the beginning of a spring storm with some light new snow and some cooling temperatures. And that means we're in a transition phase in our snowpack right now, especially on those more solar and warmer aspects. On this west aspect, we just have a bit of a melt freeze crust and the snow is really dry underneath it. You know, a couple inches of new snow from overnight. But over on those more solar aspects, this snow in the middle of the snowpack is still wet. And that's actually gonna take some time to cool off, to dry and to freeze. And so what that means is even though we may have some cool temperatures, some new snow, we still do have some wet slab concerns in that middle of the snowpack on those more solar aspects. On this slope in particular, at west as on a west aspect, we still have a little bit of a lingering persistent slab problem. We've got a crust that's decomposed fairly far into just being facets with some evidence of some old polycrystal clusters. But we're getting some snow pit tests on that. This compression test failed on the 10th tap. Problem is we've got ski tracks on the slope right next to us. So what that means is snow pits and ski tracks and avalanches, they may not be lining up really well right now. Uh, we may, this is one of those situations where the snow pit is reactive, the skiers aren't triggering avalanches, but they could. And so that gets into a tricky area where you're seeing fresh tracks in the snow, you're seeing other people have skied the slope, you're looking to ski. And so you don't take the time to dig down and look at the snowpack structure. If you did and you saw that result and saw that poor structure, it might cause you to step back and not ski that slope, regardless of the fact that someone else skied it before you, just because it's like rolling the dice in conditions like this. Now, moving back into managing that wet slab problem on those more solar and warmer aspects, some common traps people fall into in conditions like this, where we've had sustained warm temperatures in the spring, and then we move into a cooler period of a spring storm is that they might start high in the slope where this crust is a little more stout and supportable. And as they make their way down the slope, that crust gets thinner and thinner as you get into a bit more warmer terrain closer to mid elevation until you impact that wet snow and release a wet slab, especially when it's sitting on a crust. So just some kind of general advice in managing conditions like this is be aware that yes, you may be on a supportable crust. There may be wet snow underneath it. Take the time, just poke through that crust, get an idea how stout that crust is and pay attention to changing conditions, both as you're making your way down the slope or as you're wrapping aspects around a bowl uh, where that crust could be a little bit thicker on one aspect in the bowl. As you move around the bowl, change aspects, it could become thinner where you're more likely to impact that wet snow mid-pack. Uh, with that, we're not out of the water when it comes to persistent slab problems, especially in the Southern Bitterroot. The snowpack on this slope is significantly stronger than the site of the fatal avalanche last week that if you were to wrap around this bowl, probably a quarter mile, uh, we would come to that accident site. The snowpack over there was significantly weaker than it is right here. Uh, but just be alert to changing conditions. Let us know what you're seeing and ski and ride safe.